2008. Well done, John. From the guy. Oh. And I was a raised a PI. Oh, there it is. It was a 924. Yeah, it was originally a 924. Sure yeah. Does anybody know we are recording? So we're on. <laughs> okay, so we have visitors tonight. Very excited. Um, I am Lisa Gorley, City Council member and chair of this committee. And we should go around the room and introduce everybody. Uh, Jim Gorley. Mike Davis. Shirley Bird. Brock Byers. Bob Dalton. Betty Westcott. Jeff Lynn. Sean Morgan. And, and Dick Knowles. And Larry's on his way. Okay. All right. Thank you. So first thing on the agenda, we're going to approve the minutes. Was there anything that anybody wanted to discuss regarding the minutes? Okay. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> okay. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. That's great. And that brings us to today's agenda. So we will start with the Community Health Care Committee. Yeah, we're, we're a small tight group. We are <laughs> <laughs> committee. Uh, you know, I just talked with Dick and, uh, you know, I think we're at a point where both of us feel comfortable. That we, we've never really come out formally announced that we're not having a health fair in the fall, but I think it's, I think we're there. Don't you think, Dick? Yes. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and have a more formal announcement in the new era that we're just due to this COVID. I mean, the, the numbers come out today. Lynn County is only at 38% vaccinated. Uh, it just is not in our favor to have a big, large group of people in, into a building. So I think we're just going to go ahead and uh, announce that. Um, but yet, yeah, focus on some other things that we can do throughout the year. Obviously, this month, if you look around town and, and Jim's helped us, we've been stringing out the Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, and, you know, thanks to the, the city for supporting us in that effort. Uh, and we're going to start looking at what we can do the remainder of the year, what other topics are coming up. I know breast cancer awareness is out there on the horizon and some others that will probably be uh, focusing that effort as well. And then I uh, met with the uh, Sweet Home Health Center down there and they're eager to get back into the picture and they want to really kind of team up here with this health committee if possible and be, have a presence here as well. And uh, so we can pull off some sort of community event, outdoors, small, uh, focused uh, with the services they provide. So that's another one that we're looking at. And then I talked to Ian Rollins from Samaritan today, and uh, they're putting a push on uh, people to get vaccinated. And so they were wondering if we would be willing to put the posters out and work with businesses to just encourage people to get vaccinated. So I told you the posters would definitely work in that direction. So questions. Um, yeah, can you get vaccinated here in town anywhere right now? You can just walk right in, I believe, right? Safeway uh -huh. is currently doing that. Uh, I'm not sure about the Samaritan facility itself, whether they're just taking walk ins. I was at Walgreens today and there was a pretty good line of people in there. They had two lines of people just to walk in uh, getting COVID shots. So uh, I hear Sio is even taking appointments at the pharmacy because yeah. it takes five shots to go through and that they're making appointments. Johnson, Johnson. Yeah. So but um, so to follow up on the uh, we did what two now? We've done two of those um, uh, Clinics and we had how many? 350 at those clinics? 320 ish, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. So we've had really good, uh, I thought, really good <laughs> participation for that. And uh, so I, and you know, I don't see why uh, the folks, I thought they'd be a lot more um, hesitant, but they're, they were, everybody was really positive on that. And uh, the other thing on the, uh, the signs, if we can ever figure out what we're going to do with, you know, what which ones we want to do, I think on any, everything that we do uh, through the city and the school and things like that, maybe we ought to have a little byline on top that reminds us of what what it is. Like so mental health been, month, this yeah. is mental health month, this is. They definitely have a calendar out there that you can look at. I looked at it. They've already got uh, the, just a thought. I mean, if, yeah. Uh, 
But they do have a calendar out there. Good ideas. So you're looking at maybe the entire year, identifying a couple of things that we could use signs in the community yeah. office. That's a great idea. Yeah. And um, so as you're talking, I was thinking, well, those healthcare providers that normally show up at the fair, if they gave us the materials, we could create packets and literally have a drive through and hand out packets to people yeah. for them to just take. During, so, you know, his, during maybe, the deal. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad idea. I know uh, Dick and I were going to take the list of 50 plus vendors we have had at the health fair. He'll take half, I'll take half, and definitely reach out to them personally by phone or email and make sure they are aware of what's going on, but we still want them in our community. So we're yeah. going to make sure we put a positive spin on that, even though let them know we haven't forgot about them. Yeah. Well, let us know what you guys come up with and we can calendar it or help support it in whatever way. Because I know the ones that have reached out to us. And they were disappointed, you know, but they also understood. And I think Dick's probably talked to a lot too, Dick, haven't you, that have really held back on events? Yeah, it's, there are going to be very, very few events this year. Same reason. People can't trust the direction that the government's going. And sometimes it's okay, sometimes it isn't. And these things take time to set up. So they're giving themselves through August and September, I think. Please get more guests. We have more people who joined us. Um, Christy, would you like to introduce yourself? And those of you who have just phone numbers up, if you know how to put your name in, could you do that, please? Okay, I think I've unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm Christy Walker from Sweet Home School District. Thank you. Um, Brandy? Yes, hi there. Brandy O'Bannon. I'm the executive director of the Lebanon Community Hospital Foundation. Thank you. And do we have anybody else? I see Brandon is on the line. And so just two. I see five, but um, uh, it's not that I can't count. Okay. Those two are the same. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Okay. All right. So. Dick, did you have anything you wanted to add to that at all? No, that's that's it. Thank you. Okay. And that brings us to Western University. And Larry's not here. Larry's not here. Um, and for those of you who weren't here at our last meeting, they did a lovely presentation. It was very nice. So brings us to the Homeless Action Committee. And I see Michael Davis's name on here. Welcome, Michael. Hey, hi. Um, how's it going and what are you guys working on? Um, well, right now we're um, we're just working on the house up there as far as doing any physical work or anything like that. And I, I guess that the city submitted something to them about the lawn needed to be mowed or something. So they took care of that. And uh, we're working on getting the windows re repaired. There's, there are actually newer windows. They just need some repair. We actually don't take possession of the rest of the property until August 12th. We did put a contingency in there that would might motivate her to to move out sooner, but you know that's basically our start date. Um, we, um, you know, when I say we, I mean us. Basically, uh, our 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 theme has always been that this is really not our project; it's your project. And we're just going to come alongside you and try and share our experience um, with, you know, housing homeless people and that kind of stuff. And um, as you guys know, according to the old condition and use permit, um, there, you know, kind of limits limits us as far as currently what can be the property can be utilized for, which is fine because that fits into the mission that you guys shared about you know the folks that were there at those meetings that we had about where your hearts were in that too. So it fits nicely. We don't need to go get crazy in there. Um, I think what we plan on right now is to probably house um, women and children in the main building and all that kind of stuff, and then maybe look into what how we're going to utilize the house. Um, there, there's been some discussion about mental health housing. There's been some discussion about non-sex offender male housing. 
um, and that kind of stuff. And you know, one of the things I want to make sure you guys are aware of that we don't plan on bringing anybody up here outside of the Sweet Home community. This project is for Sweet Home. It's not for people coming from Bend. It's not for people who want to come back up here from Albany or any of that kind of stuff. This is for Sweet Home. And uh, so, you know, we, we want to make sure you guys knew that. Um, we uh, we have all kinds of programs and stuff that we, we use now there at the Albany Helping Hands. Uh, the TOPS program is one. It's basically upon somebody's interview there, we start to address their needs, their acute needs, like driver's license, fines, you know, any kind of legal stuff, get that stuff all sorted out. And then they go into the, you know, a TOPS, a similar to a TOPS program, which is basically going to identify, you know, how to reintroduce them into the working life, you know, the working life to be taxpayers and that kind of thing. So we have um, several partnerships with, you know, different agencies, some of them that are already working up here, like Family Tree. They actually, Stephanie's in the process of, of writing a grant specifically to provide, be able to, to provide services to that property. Um, we, we plan on potentially opening up the sanctuary area, um, depending on what, you know, when all of us get together again, what we, you know, you guys let us know how you want to do that. But um, some of those agencies would like to have office space and be able to, you know, perform their what the services they offer right there on site. So, I mean, that's, I don't know, does that help? It helps a lot. Yeah. It helps a lot. Questions, anybody? Is the city manager here? Yeah. yeah that is. Hey, so you're actually Albany Helping Hands. Right? No, this oh, is no. uh this is um it's still the same people, the same ownership owns the building, and that's the Hope Center. So you know, Hope Center. What we've done is we have about four um, Albany Helping Hands board members that are now board members of that. The other board members who were from this area, they all resigned most of them years ago. The only two people that were left on the board, I think, was Lita. Yeah, I'm gonna get this, manager, yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to get this wrong. But there was another lady, sweet elderly lady. I can't remember her doggone name now. She just lives right up here, too. But those are the last two that were on the board. They've resigned since then. So, yeah. So uh, are you going to do any of the uh, juvenile um, housing? Well, um, I mean, there, there are obviously sometimes moms come with kids too, you know, so yes, we'll, but we're not going to have like, as far as I know, unless you guys want us to go a different direction, if you see a huge need and that's an, an, a direction that you guys want to go, we haven't even, we haven't even got to the place where we started adding some of you community members to the board yet. And we plan on doing that. We've done some snooping around and, and uh, I think that there's some good candidates for that. If you don't get picked, don't think you're not a good candidate. <laughs> Brock told us who to pick. <laughs> okay. Well, that's exciting. So. Well, one of the things that's really cool about that facility is somebody spent a bunch of money, um, like already putting sprinkler systems in inside of it and all that. So we don't got to go through all that drama. That's a kind of a pain. Now, if we decide to go up another floor, there we may end up needing to apply for a permit to do that and we, we will anyways because if there's any construction i can see that potentially the basement of that house we may want to pull a permit there because we're we kind of checked out the headroom the headspace in there and there's plenty of room to insulate put sheetrock maybe even put another bathroom down there in a couple more rooms so we may be you know, going to the city with those ideas and concepts, but we really want to be led by you guys. We don't want to be the directors. We want we want to be led by the community and 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 try to keep our finger on the pulse of the needs of the community, not what we think is best, because we don't know. You guys do. You guys know by numbers how many people you have out there that are that are homeless. You also know, from what I understand from the meetings that we've had, you have a fair um, a sense of of how many of those folks have mental health challenges and to what degree. We don't know. I've only met like three or four of the homeless people. I met a guy at Safeway and chatted with him for a while. And then uh, another one of the guys at 
Bethany's church there, so I haven't um, got to meet a whole bunch of them. Okay. And so you provide like um, support while they are homeless, possibly counseling, and do you bring in different entities to provide services? Yeah, um, that's that's uh, going to be the job of Family Tree. Okay. Those guys have what they call peer support specialists, and those guys are basically the ones that will help everybody navigate where they need to be, give them rides, that kind of stuff. And then hopefully um, we can get I, – I'm not sure even if there's a satellite office up here for mental health yet or not. I, I know that somebody's probably mentioned it, but I, you know, I blame everything on COVID, but – uh, anyways, uh, we want to be able to do that, make sure that all those people are in place. Uh, that's what we do in Albany, too, is, you know, basically we provide the structure and and we have all the other agencies provide the wraparound services because it'd be really insane to try to repeat what they're already doing. So um, Dick Knowles is the closest thing we have to a mental health um, resource expert, <laughs> so yeah. he's the person to talk to about sure. what's coming this way. Yeah, I think I sit on another board with Dick, too, so I'm going to blame everything on Dick when it comes to mental health. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting used to it. <laughs> well, we didn't have anything here, and then Benton County came here, and then after Benton County was here for, what, probably two and a half years, then... Lane County started coming back. Is that right, Dick? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah, we we've had a heart for for East Lynn for years, trying to figure out you know how we can pull resources. We at Albany Helping Hands, we primarily for the 20 years. I don't know. A lot of you guys don't know the story. I'll make it short. Um, but it, it Helping Hands got started by Pastor Bailey, and he was making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and lunches, and taking them out to people living in the bushes. Well, eventually he got a church, and so he was filling this church. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, people in the attics. There were just like 20 people in the attic living there. And so, anyways, we've been self-supporting all this time. We haven't done grants or any of that kind of stuff. Some small little grants, but... Um, we've used uh, some of our enterprises, like we have a woodlot to where we provide all the firewood for all the coastal farm stores throughout Oregon, and I think one in California. We provide Lynn County Parks with all their firewood, and we sell firewood to individuals, too. We have a thrift store that brings out a substantial amount of money. Um, we have a U-Haul business. And so our, our theory is, you know, we get folks in, love on them. Get, get their ID straightened out, get their heads right, and then put them to work. Show them, get, them, get some work ethic going. I mean, we, we believe that a lot of the stuff that comes right out of the Bible, man, and it's, it's, that's kind of the theme, is you don't work, you don't eat, that kind of thing. Obviously, there are some folks that will be a little bit more challenging to have out at our woodlot with a chainsaw in their hand. So we, you know, we let our staff decide how that goes. But we also do Christmas trees, and that's, that's a big one too. So, you know, those are some things that we're going to look into up here as well. Um, we, want, we want that place to be able to be self-sustaining um, like we are at Helping Hands. We just, we just took in our first major grant. It was like, and I, I'm not for necessarily for it, but we're doing it. It's like 938000 bucks. we got this grant, and we're going to remodel a bunch of stuff, add some square footage, and then have a whole section for low barrier which I think is another dicey, you know, gutsy move when you have people that are trying to be clean and sober and then you have this low barrier um, demographic that's going to be on site. So it's going to be one of those new tricky adventures that we're wandering into. We don't plan on doing low barrier up there. I uh, don't think it's the, the place for it, really, especially in that area where it is. Downtown. You guys have some congestion down there as it is. And so I, I think we're... You know, I don't know. You guys, I, I'm telling you what my ideas are on, on different stuff and have some conversations that we've had. But who knows where it's going to end up? I know that I want to stay within the confines of the of the uh, conditional use permit. That's that's important for now, for sure. And then if you guys want to take us to other places with that, we we can certainly take a look at that. Have you met Dr. Horton? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Larry is. That's him. Yeah, I think he's already been over there working. <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah.
Yeah, I just, these guys decided to do a cleanup over there, and I just had hernia surgery like a day before. So I, I, I wandered up there, but they were, they were already done. But, so I didn't get to participate in that. I planned it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, what would you see as the next step? I know you're just uh, new into this portion of it, but what do you, do you view as the next step? Well, well right now I'm writing a uh, um, operations manual. And I'm about 80% there on that. So once I get that up and going, I want to provide you guys with that. Uh, basically, it, it'll be a um, one of those deals where I'll hand off some binders, and you guys can take some red pen and add or take away. And then we'll gather that information, we'll dial it in, and we'll have Stephanie Cameron from Family Tree involved in that piece as well, and whoever else wants to participate in it. And then I, I would like to... Since we already have possession of that, that house, I would like to kind of get that thing up and going, you know, make a decision what direction we're going to go with that. And I think, you know, Bethany will be a big part of that, too. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just have something functioning and going. It might we may not even house anybody there. That might be like an intake center or something. Who knows? But again, I, I just want you guys keep saying this because I this is where my heart is. This is where helping hands position is also is this is your project. If you guys see an area or collectively have some ideas or concepts that you want to implement there, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, one of them guys, one of you guys, you, he, I, was it, it might have been him. What's your name again? <laughs> I, I'm not telling you. When I mentioned something about money, let's figure out how to pay for it. It was Bob Dalton. Yeah, and he, and he, said, Dalton. he said, never let money you know limit you or whatever so uh, we're gonna we're i just look at it you can't really if money is your stumbling block you'll never get anywhere yeah i mean you have to look past that mm -hmm. yeah i see that but i'm also you know it's going to take some to to make this thing kick off and again you know we get it kicked off we i don't want to end up in a situation where we're draining albany helping hands resources because they have things they're doing there too um but i mean we've already invested sizable amount of money in in doing this and and you know we'll continue to do so as long as we can and um i i'm, I'm optimistic uh, we also lost one of our board members already too i don't know if you guys remember randy or if you met randy glaser he wrote some grants already before we even took possession of the property he passed away last saturday oh, found out tuesday that he had cancer and on saturday he died Wow, oh, that that, that littered up. Yeah, so it's kind of a, a blessing in a sense because he didn't, you know, he wasn't suffering the whole time. We noticed he wasn't quite Randy, and he lost a bunch of weight. But but we just we didn't know what was up. We finally forced him to go to the doctor, and they found out. So so he uh, we're we're gathering up all his information. He's the one that handled the insurance and all that stuff. So we do have insurance on the property. Both both properties is all safe and Buku insurance on it. So there's been some some movement there. So good. More questions? Anybody? Dave. Okay. Let's go back to Do you wanna do we have anything else on homeless? Well, I know you're Larry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have Larry, I'll take it over then. Uh, the Lisa. Yes. If I may, if I may, on the chat, uh, Christy was wondering what the address was of this. Not everyone knows where the property is. Oh, what is that? Twelve ten is the uh, is the city hall. Twelve ten, I think. It's uh, twelve hundred twelve. So it'd be eleven eleven hundred block of twelve by 12. just uh, yeah, south 12, of the old, right, right next to the Hope Center. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And and the other thing, uh, Mike, I've heard you do this before, and looking at the people in the room, I this may not be that necessary, but not everybody knows the difference between uh, the barriers, high and low barriers. So you might be careful to make sure that people understand what the difference is. It's actually kind of counter counterintuitive if you first hear it. Yeah, so she's better at describing that than anybody here, probably. Can you tell us? 
<laughs> high barrier usually means that you don't have big behavior problems, that you're clean and sober. Low barrier usually means that you might have just a struggle with mental illness and be able to be in um, a home or a shelter where people are expected to behave themselves, or you have a drug and alcohol substance use disorder. Yeah. That's it. And mixing and mixing them is not a good idea, generally. No, I don't no. think it is a good idea. There's a lot of the, the grants that measure 110 grant and some other grants that are out there right now. One of the qualifications to receive those has that component in it. And I just I mean, I I don't know, a lot of you guys don't know me, but I'm also the guy that brought Oxford House to the Willamette Valley. And so I've spent the last 25 years housing dope fiends and, and drunks and people. There's people I shouldn't refer to it. I hate that myself. But um, so I, I can't imagine having in the same house somebody because we have we have policies and exemptions to the landlord tenant law that allows us to evict people immediately upon relapse, which a lot of other places don't have. Um, we're protected. There's by a. a Oh, I think it was the Reagan era, 1856 or something like that. It, that is the number on the the, the uh, measure or whatever it was, where it, it deemed alcoholics and drug addicts a protective class of people. And so there's a certain discriminatory laws in regard to how you house them, if you give insurance to them, so on and so forth. So um, I cannot imagine what that would be like housing people who are loaded with people who are trying to be clean and sober and being able to maintain that like that. So they're pushing it and we're doing it. We're going to try it. I'm against it personally, but um, I'm willing to give it a shot. So so if I might, I'm not trying to oversell you, Mike, but um, some of the subtleties are the numbers. If you have a very low number of people who are low barrier, you can often get away with it, pardon the expression. The other issue is that it depends on what makes you a low barrier person. And if it's just a mental health kinds of issue, a mental, um, you know, some, some kind of mentation issue, um, if your resources are good enough, you can often pull it together within a very short period of time. You don't really have to kick anybody back out in the streets or whatever. But those are all very difficult to maintain, and you're right, it's uh, it, it's tough. So I'm just saying it to the group. We don't need to exclude it. Um, I think there's probably enough high barrier folks in the community. We can start with them, um, but you never know. Actually, Sean and and uh, Jeff probably have a fairly good sense of that. Yeah, if we could get Sean to stay at that house at nighttime, <laughs> I think we could do. I could think we could fill it with all low barrier. <laughs> it has occurred to me. It has occurred to me. Yes, <laughs> C controlling him would it would be a problem. Sure. <laughs> so I see another question there from Christy uh, that they do have some kids at Jackson, uh, the Jackson. Youth shelter. Youth shelter over in Albany. Uh, and whenever you send the kids over to a youth shelter or anything like that, then wherever they come from, Sweet Home then is responsible to make sure that they get an education. So Larry probably knows all about that, too. Well, you but have to provide the education. We have to provide the education. So it's, it costs us to to do that as this as a school. And, it, and we don't, it's hard to make sure that they get what they need over there. Yeah. So that's why she brought that up. That's why I brought it up. Well, we help them keep their community rather than mm -hmm. isolated. It's important, so, especially the kids. So. I can kind of update you on where where I've been riding around for the last month. I, I've been met with Mike and his group twice. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy to see that they are kind of taking on the high barrier group to work with. And I think where Jeff and Sean and Ray and and uh, FAC are working more with the people that are on the street. And what are we going to do with them? 
And so for the last month, uh, I met with Sherry Springer, one of the uh, county commissioners about a month ago, met with her and pitched the idea of trying to come up with some property that the county owns to potentially work on a site for, and I don't know that low barrier is the right word, but for the, the people that are on the street, where are we going to put them? And so we're trying to find a location. And so I started with Sherry and I met with her myself. And then uh, Sean and I met with Will Tucker about two weeks after that. And Will came up with actually we had a piece of land that we were thinking might work and Will came up with another piece of land that he thought might work. We went and looked at it and it probably will or would work if that's the piece that we end up getting. And then uh, Jeff and Sean and myself met with uh, Roger Nyquist about two weeks ago and pitched the idea to him that, you know, we'd like to acquire some property from the county. And we explained what we were hoping to get it for to somehow or another get the people off the street. And Roger was very, uh, very positive about the concept. So all three of the county commissioners appear to be uh, supportive of the concept. I'm going to say it's a concept because we don't have actual things to present to them at this point yet. We will, but not yet. So uh, Jeff and Ray and myself are going to try and get together in the very near future to come up with some strategies on how the city might be able to work with the county to come up with a piece of land that would be appropriate for a facility for getting the people off the street. And that's kind of where we are. Uh, I hope that we can come up with some some ideas in the very near future as to uh, where we're thinking, what we're thinking, and hopefully that will happen with Jeff and Ray and myself and doing the next step. Then along with that, FAC has been working, especially Brock, I think, more than Shirley, but has been working on, um, I don't know, what would you call it, Brock? Um, it's kind of like Mike. It's the operational policies. Okay. It's the procedures. Um, uh, I talked with Sean a little bit about today about ongoing what we really need when the property comes or what they're going to need in presentation is here's the plan. Here's, you know, on day one, what do we do? And we're going to have to come up with that, what that plan really is with the details and um, you know, have the various groups and committees of ownership and who owns and who's, you know, what, what are, I guess in my old days, they called it racy, you know, who's responsible, who's accountable, who needs to know about things, things like that. So we, we have a little bit more work to do. We have, I think we're pretty close on policies, procedures and operations, um, but it would be good to actually cross coordinate so that we make sure that there's no inconsistency. So as people graduate, they can graduate into a higher barrier situation. And, so. um, and then it's really getting the plan down. So on day one, let's say they say, great, you have the property, go. We should have that what that plan is. So we're pretty close. And I think we've made really good progress on all of these fronts. Uh, the biggest one that's in my mind, though, is, is getting Ray and the city and the county together and talking about how we can possibly get one of those two pieces of property. Uh, you know, and I, either one would work. Well, I think Sean and Jeff and myself feel one would work better than the other, but a lot will depend on what the county's looking at for using the land and what the city might want to do with the land and mm -hmm. so those things have to be worked out and we're very close to, to getting to that point so that's the update that we have at this point that's great that's great progress so at this point does anybody have any more questions oh they just did a lovely report last month do you have anything else to report for western university no i don't Okay.
I do know that I talked with the school district and about you coming there, and they said that they were more than willing to do it. And uh, a couple times now. <laughs> well, I've let Tom know a couple times that he could actually look at the video from the city. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's a an amazing thing for our school district to have that mentorship in our community. Yeah, it's been great. So Christy wants to know if the property would be close to town. She's concerned with the lack of public transportation and it'd be difficult to get some of the residents um, to the needed services. Her audio is not working. Both, both pieces of property are uh, close to Main Street. One of them is on Main Street and both are within a walking distance of all types of services. Great. All the right. plan was to have services. Ideally, we would do like Mike suggested. We would have a space where the other agencies can come in and serve the, the clients that are there. That's the idea. Great. So let's go around the room. Um, we'll start with Sean. Do you have anything you want to bring up or talk about? Yeah, How's it going? Good. <laughs> okay. Really? I don't know anything. <laughs> Ignorance of bliss. Yeah, so, Mike, did you bring up anything else? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Um, right? Everything's good. Everything's good. You heard me. Sure. Not right now. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys, you guys? Well, I guess I have two things. Oh. <laughs> I'll, 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 um, the first is um, <laughs> just from, we do outreach. And from that perspective, since we've disbanded, our, our numbers have dropped very significantly. You know, before we had a consolidated area where we could service, well, at one point we were servicing almost 30, 30 individuals at one point, but um, it's a little tougher. So we've transitioned, we, we go to multiple spaces now. Um, we kind of know where people hang out. We try to visit there. So it's a little tougher and that's why we're really excited about a dynamic is this because now we can get not only our services but all other services to individuals that need it. Um, what was the oh the other piece is um, well we'll learn more about what happens with the property and what kind of a time thought of time frame but we're in desperate need of office space. We would like to start our hub operations sooner than later. Uh, for Sweet Home. And what, what a hub means is basically our charter is street outreach, but it's also to provide a hub in, in Sweet Home, Lebanon, and Albany as a resource center, similar to what is happening here, but as a way of helping our individuals get connected in to get IDs to um, other services and so on and so forth. So we would like to, if anybody hears of things in the meantime or Perhaps this could go a lot faster than we think, and then we would hope that maybe we can have an office in that space, depending on which property and how we want to set it up. So are you looking to manage a hub or to just be part of a hub? Manage. Okay. That's actually good to know. So, all right. Um, anything else on that? And Thank you've you. been talking to you, and we're doing awesome. Yeah, I go through him. <laughs> He's the boss. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we will yeah, him. Yeah, I think we'll kick Bob. Not kick me. Kick me or cook me either one. <laughs> <why. laughs> You've already grilled me once. So no, I have nothing. Okay. I just you know, great job by everybody in this room and and what you're all are doing. It's good to see this many people at a table that are kind of focused on the same same direction. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, Pat? He's back here again. So, I guess. Oh, you have something? Go ahead. I do. I do. Right. So, uh, first quarter of the year, I don't know if uh, Chief has shared those results with uh, our stats on mental health calls with this group. I don't remember. First quarter so of the year. Last, last meeting. We talked about last meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, it went from 31. Uh, what do we have last year? 31 uh, mental health calls. In the first quarter, there should be 120. So, wow. uh, we called Lynn County Mental Health and and I uh, had a meeting with their folks, uh, some supervisors, and they uh, they sent it, started seeing a crisis worker up here to go out with police officers and me with different individuals in town. And uh, we've, we've now done that three weeks in a row. Um, so 
it takes a while to make to see success, but we see the uh, seeds of success, at least with a couple, several individuals we talked about uh, today. So um, kind of an exciting direction. Uh, Lane County Mental Health is stepping up and you know, up to the plate and giving us a hand with this. It's pretty cool. So with that kind of a jump, are you seeing it, um, what's propelling it? Is it access to medication or is it social stressors? I don't know if I can characterize that. That would be all across the board, I think, okay. from what more people are seeing. So you said from 30 to 130? One, one. 30 to 120. Okay. 31 to 120. Yeah. Um, there's a similar, not as large an increase in, in, in suicide in calls related to suicide. Uh, not necessarily suicides, but suicidal type calls. I don't remember those numbers off the top of my head. The numbers are much smaller. But they're the same it's a smaller same. increase, but it's, it's dramatic, too. Yeah. So, um, do you think that has to do with COVID at all? I, I don't know. I, I have to, I, I don't know. Is, Is any of those calls overdose? Some are. Yeah, you know how many? No, not off the top of my head. He has that so that uh, finding the why number? the increase is, is always kind of difficult because everybody's a little different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've, we've developed a, um, a list of individuals that we have frequent contacts with that are in some type of crisis routinely. And so with the Lynn County Mental Health, we're focusing on those individuals going out hopefully on a weekly basis. We just talked with them uh, again today. And, and they're still on board and, and they think there's going to be some um, uh, benefit to it. And so uh, we're going to continue with it. Hopefully, you know, as we, uh, Sean and the outreach, crisis outreach worker, you know, develop some of those reports, we might be able to see some, some, uh, some change. Do you get a lot of younger? It's all over the board. It's absolutely a reward. And, and it's like the homelessness. Um, every story is different. Each of these folks is different. There's drugs involved in some cases. There's um, schizophrenia at the root of um, other cases. Um, and then which was a chicken or the egg is just as difficult to tell um, as with a lot of our, a lot of the, a lot of the homeless folks that we talked to as well. Not not um, many kids, if that's what you're That's what I was wondering about. Not, not oh, a tremendous amount like of juveniles that we are. And, oh, okay. Uh, Christy might have something different. That's on what that. I was uh, yeah. just interested because she'd asked the other questions. Yeah. Thank you. So do you guys do you guys have like a grant writer that's a part of this group? Not yet. Yeah. Are you interested? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're always looking. Yeah. So I know that. Um, yeah, that's that. Will Tucker is a resource. I'm yes. telling you. He has a lady named Rachel. Yes. And I mean, any of these groups that don't have a, a grant writer are a waste of time, in my opinion. I mean, obviously in the beginning, you don't have one, but you got to be able to tap into the resources to be able to address this stuff somehow. And, and Will, right Will now, Tucker did, in, did already say that he would sign her up. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a good deal. She, I think she helped write one that we'll, you know, good. submitted, so that's good. So in the past, we've kind of functioned like a communication hub. I see. For healthcare providers and people with interests and um, get everybody in the room and have a conversation. And that's how we kind of come up with these subcommittees. And, ah. um, that way everybody knows and we've got all the players together and they can meet and talk and sure. make their projects a reality. And it, it works really well. Nice. And so, um, so, our newspaper reporter. Do you have any questions for anybody? Um, no, I don't think a lot of stuff is covered. Okay. Pretty comprehensively. Thank you. Um, John, uh, John took care of mine. Great. Any other business? Dick, do you have any other business? I, I do not. Thank you. Christy, do you have any more business? She'll take something if she does. Them. Brandy, do you have anything that you would like to address while we're here? I don't. I just be, appreciate being the opportunity to be a, a guest and, and just um, thank you all. I know several of you helped us with the vaccine clinic with Sweet Home. We really appreciate all those efforts. And thank you for talking to our marketing team about continuing to get the word out about uh, 
that opportunity with posters and different things and just ongoing if there's any ways that um, you'd like to partner with me at the foundation office there at the hospital I think there might be some unique opportunities we do offer a number of scholarships uh, for local students pursuing uh, education um, wanting to become a medical professional and um, I was just reviewing some of those today and we have some great candidates from Sweet Home which is wonderful but just starting to get acquainted so happy to join in thank you thank you for being here um, Christy said, no, thank you. She's good. So, seeing no other business before us, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do you have a second? Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Hey, did you, did you speak? Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Nice to you. Good night. Yeah, really? Yeah, thank so you guys for that. Okay, and it's a one-time thing.